whatever could be said. 31 flights for any aircraft, you know, even a modern helicopter, that's that's quite a bit. 31 takeoff and landing. Talking Joby Aviation here with Travis out of California. Great to have you here again and lots of news. Propeller wash testing. I hadn't heard about that. It actually already happened last year. Could you just explain a little bit what is propeller wash testing and why is it relevant for Joby? Always good to join you guys again. With my experience with it on a helicopter side, it would be considered called rotor wash, but same exact thing. So that's just as this aircraft is you know taxiing to and from the runway and, and coming to land you know if you, you've seen in the movies the helicopter comes down to the ground people jump out the grass is flying everywhere getting pushed down people are ducking down which you don't technically have to do that's just more cinematic but that is what rotor wash is in terms of for EV tolls and especially you know if you're trying to land on top of a building or you know even outside of a, a structure on the, the actual ground rotor wash is what's going to blow a bunch of debris and other things away but also moreover for when passengers are coming in and out of the aircraft luckily for Joby as far as we know the props will be turned off during loading and unloading for you know line crew or anybody else in the air field and just other vehicles. Some guy with a, a brand new Gulfstream or Challenger is not going to be too happy if a Joby lands and throws a bunch of rocks into the side of his aircraft. So that's kind of the nuance or reasons why that would be most applicable for the EV toll concept. But from what we've seen from Joby and in person seeing it land, I'm sure it passed with flying colors. I don't think there's any issues. Okay, now we know what propeller wash testing is all about. And then we had a NASA simulation, 120 air taxi takeoff and landings. Is that a scenario that was just theoretical or are we really going to see something like this happen at LaGuardia Airport to uh, Manhattan downtown in New York? Well, that's an interesting question. And, uh, you know, one piece I'd like to dive into is it was 120 aircraft, of course, in a simulated world off of a, a simulated ATC, air traffic control, but it was using the live aircraft as well in the simulation. So this was not just 120 EV toll kind of video game scenario where there's nothing else going on, just them flying. This was also interacting with the actual aircraft that were flying in reality. So to me, that's really exciting because where we want this to be around is airports. Obviously that's gonna be one of the first use cases and airports have a lot of air traffic. Uh, to me, I think that's quite important. Uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, or, or that area where they were flying for the simulation. <clears throat> if you've ever flown within the United States, um, you'll notice that if you have a layover anywhere, a lot of times that's one of the, the main ones. So you have Detroit, Minneapolis, Salt Lake City, but um, Dallas is one of them. So a lot of international traffic as well. Maybe just uh, some speculation there, but I think that's, that's really exciting for the simulation. And moreover, Delta within their contract with Joby at peak, at volume, they're expecting a thousand uh, passengers a day to be moved. And so if you kind of do the math on that number of aircraft, it does start to put things a little bit closer to tangibly seeing what is this plan? They still have to execute it obviously, but do they actually have a solid plan, solid framework? Um, and I think this simulation was a, a big piece forward for that. Travis, perhaps you can shortly explain in layman's terms, what this test was actually for? Was it to test the technology, test if this ATC capacities uh, are currently there? Sure, so from my understanding, this is not just for Joby side to see you know, the data of what does it look like? We're not sure exactly how they're tracking these aircraft. Obviously they're on standard radar, but what other communication does it have to the tower equipment there, but also moreover for the air traffic controllers themselves. So the human beings that are there watching this, some people might not know that yes, there's computers involved and, and a lot of assistance, but there is a human being that is kind of the, the maestro of the orchestra at an airport landing these aircraft and speaking to these pilots. That's gonna be the other thing. If we throw in 120 aircraft, especially much smaller than maybe what they're traditionally used to and that move differently in the airspace, we gotta make sure the humans can also handle <laughs> seeing that outside the uh, the window. So that was my understanding. It was kind of the two front approach to this was how do the humans take it? And then how does the infrastructure, the you know, actual air space look? That's also one of the objections that is brought forward on social media quite often that the world is not yet ready for EV tow because there is so much complexity involved. If you compare that to an EV manufacturer, then that would be like, okay, you got to build the motorway as, as, as well. So yeah, you, you want to have everything in place for operation, for manufacturing, but also then flight controller, ground staff that go along with this. It, looks like Joby is covering all these bases and that of course will mean that there's a higher market barrier entry even though there are 700 companies now working on EV tow format if you don't have the infrastructure if you don't have all these things that we just discussed then it's very unlikely you're going to go into operations anytime soon you might sell your EV tow into a country like Saudi Arabia where you can just fly in the desert to have fun that's probably uh, maybe a different setup but in a normal densely populated area North America and Europe I don't see that happening unless you have all this the ecosystem in place. Yes, and, I, and you know, I think a great thing to just 
highlight with that is what we want to see from Joby, at least from my perspective, from the investor side, from just being excited about the company, the technology, the industry is they have to be at the tip of the spear now, but they have to also be at the tip of the spear in five years, 10 years. So I think that's what some of these simulations, even though it's exciting because we hear simulation, NASA, eVTOL, it wants to draw us to the future and forward, which is important, but we already know that they have their part 135. They can already fly these things on less smaller scale, which obviously won't get us to what we think Joby will be in 10 years, but that's how we start. So I think that's just one thing that's really exciting. We're taking care of now, but also into the future. Yeah, and let's take Ehang out of China, leading the way. They had a great start uh, back four or five years ago with the IPO $10, went straight to $115. Apparently production three years ago, ramping up to over hundreds of units per year, but so far no revenue. That's uh, exactly why some people are cautious right now. Interesting to see if Joby and when Joby is going to start with the pilot training, uh, because I mean, that's going to have to happen at some point. Any guess, uh, Travis, when uh, we're going to see the first pilot training indication? There was recently an FAA webinar um, in and around advanced air mobility, and they're not the most exciting webinars uh, per se to sit through. They're quite administrative, but some really um, positive signs that I think were, they did confirm eVTOL will be able to operate on a certified basis, although the rules will be temporary, not in the sense that they plan to change often, but before they put in this permanent structure for what is advanced air mobility, eVTOL, et cetera, look like for the next 30, 40, 50 years in airspace, how everything interacts, how they're going to build infrastructure regulations for building new infrastructure. That's going to still be a little bit of time, which actually makes me happy because also they'll be able to tweak you know, anything that we learned from the beginning. We're always going to learn. We have to keep learning. So that's really exciting. And the timeline that they give in terms of updates for that was they didn't say specifically what month, but they just said towards the end of the year, taking a couple assumptions that government employees usually bail quite close to the holiday time. If they say at the end of t this year, 2024, we're probably looking somewhere Q3, Q4. That's why I would feel confident until we hear more. That was really excited. And, and that update from them during that time will touch both pilot certification. We'll also, in terms of vertiport and kind of ground ops. So we should have a much more broad update. You know, if I really put my optimistic hat on, I would say that by that time, we would have probably already heard about pilot training because I have a feeling that it's going to be Joby controlled or somehow they're going to be tied into it with a big player. I don't think it's going to be a university. Could it be Delta and Joby have a new pilot school? Who knows? That would be really exciting. But I think we, we will really start to hear a lot more because FA is going to be important, but also Joby wise. When do we get the certification? But then also when does FA say, hey, you can fly this thing in the airspace? They're similar, but completely different paths that we need to successfully get down. So exciting to see the first uh, pilots and when we're going to see traction on that. And talking FAA, Joby also had a session with the FAA on 31 takeoff and landings. So why is that crucial going forward for certification? Yes. So this was you know, just earlier this week and really exciting. Yeah, I posted something on X, which I think the, the biggest things are the FAA is using Joby as the test case for how to design and iterate around Vertiport, specifically design and operation. And maybe we could touch on some of the, the patent conversation around that next. The other piece of it is seeing 31 flights in two days, you know, isn't people who might say, oh, that's just a made up video or simulation. Joby can't fly this thing. Whatever could be said. 31 flights for any aircraft, you know, even a modern helicopter, that's that's quite a bit. 31 takeoff and landing. In terms of robustness of the aircraft, I think that's pretty exciting. We don't know exactly how long the flights were. I'll do some digging on that, but that's also a great thing.